great. So we are in the book of Colossians and we are ending our series today. Uh, we've been taking a, a passage out of each of the four chapters and today we're in the last chapter, chapter four. And as you look at chapter four, you, you realize that, that one of the key themes coming out of that chapter is this theme of prayer. Since we started the series, we've been saying that uh, a major theme running through the whole of Colossians is that Jesus Christ is enough. He is sufficient for us. And, and if, if you're anything like me uh, in your walk with Jesus, you want to get closer to him and, 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 and experience this sufficiency. This enoughness of Jesus. Well, what does that look like? And, and, and Colossians chapter 4 helps us because one of the ways that God has set things up for us to be able to experience that Jesus is enough is through prayer. And this morning we will be talking about prayer. And we've divided up our message into two uh, broad parts. Praying for non-Christians to receive the gospel. So even leading into our viral series uh, coming up, this idea of evangelism, which is at the core of who we are as followers of Jesus. And then praying as service towards other followers of Jesus. So please turn with me to Colossians chapter 4, and we'll be reading verses 2 up to verse 4. I'll be covering the first of those two uh, broad parts. This is what Paul writes from prison in Rome. And with him is Timothy, his son in the faith. He says, devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful, and pray for us too that God may open a door for our message so that we may proclaim the mystery of Christ for which I am in chains. Pray that I may proclaim it clearly as I should. Devote yourselves to prayer. That means persist in prayer. That means be constant in prayer. It means to continue in prayer. It means, hey, keep going, guys, in prayer. He was telling the Colossians, I want you guys to persevere in prayer. Left to ourselves, if we're honest, we don't really want to be this committed to prayer. Left to ourselves, we'll come up with reasons and, 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 and excuses and, and all kinds of things that will just cut in on this kind of persistence in prayer. And just as the Colossians needed encouragement to pray, we also need encouragement to pray. Devote yourselves to prayer. It's, it's not really a suggestion, is it? Like, guys, I think it would be nice if you prayed. It's a good idea. No, he's giving them an instruction. He's saying, guys, this is an instruction. This is how you are to live. You are to be devoted to prayer. God's tribe, let's devote ourselves to prayer. Let's have regular times of prayer on our own. Let's have regular times of prayer with our families and our friends. We talk of life groups here at, at God's tribe. These are, uh, are groups of us that meet regularly in homes to, to fellowship, to pray together, to dive into God's word together. In those contexts, devote yourselves to prayer. All of us are welcome to a prayer meeting that happens in the banda out here at 9 a.m. Come, let's all pray. It's not just for the leaders, it's for everyone. All of us are welcome to pray. Arthur and Alice, they are usually among the first to be there praying. Even after a busy week, Arthur was working until 5 p.m. yesterday. He was, he was here early. He was, man, we, we, we want to be devoted to praying. 
men, you are all welcome to pray. We have a once a month, just once a month, <laughs> prayer meeting for an hour and a half, like 90 minutes, last Saturday of the month. So we had, we had this month's prayer meeting yesterday. You're all welcome to that prayer meeting. There were five of us yesterday. And one of those five was, is 16 years old. And I'm like, I know we are busy with family responsibilities and we're traveling and we have jobs and stuff happens. And I respect that and I appreciate that. But I'm like, are we as men of God's tribe, are we really devoted to prayer? Young men, older men, are we, are we, can we say that we are, man, we, 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 we want to pray. We, we are devoted, we're committed to pray. Being watchful, that means being alert, being awake. There's many things that would want to make us sleep. Like, oh, you, you, you know, Jesus took his three closest friends and he says, guys, come and pray with me, stay awake. It wasn't long before he went to the cross and these guys fall asleep. <sighs> being watchful, being awake, being alert, pray. Being thankful. Thankfulness is the right attitude for Christians when it comes to praying. Last week, we saw that whatever we do, we have to do it with thanksgiving. Everything. Thanksgiving. Prayer is not just about asking God. Prayer is also about saying, God, I am so grateful for what I already have. And then Paul changes gears and he says, in your praying, pray for us too. Don't only pray for yourselves, pray for us as well. This is the Apostle Paul, church planter, evangelist, miracle worker, breakthrough man. He is a man of God. God's used this guy incredibly. And he's saying, guys, listen, pray for me as well. I need your prayers. Pray for us too. And what is he saying they should pray for? He says, well, pray for an open door for our message. Pray for an entrance, an opening for the message of the gospel. Paul had completely devoted his life to the gospel. And he's saying, I want you to pray for an open door for that message. Why? Well, so that we may proclaim the mystery of Christ. The mystery of Christ is not meant to remain hidden. It is to be proclaimed. Another translation says, declare the mystery of Christ. The mystery of Christ is to be spoken about. If we go back to chapter 1 in verse 26, it says the mystery that has been kept hidden for ages and generations, but is now disclosed to the Lord's people. Amen. The best news in the world is Jesus Christ. The best news in the world is the gospel. Think right now of the best news you could receive about your spouse, if you're married, about your brother or sister, about your parents, about your kids, about your job, about your health, about your finances, about your neighborhood. Think of the best news you could receive. It is in comparison to Jesus. It doesn't match that. Jesus is the best news. He is the best thing. His death on the cross, his resurrection from the grave, bursting out of that grave, his forgiveness of our sins, his making us come into the family of God by grace. That is the best news ever. The gospel. And this is the news. This is the, 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 the message that, that Paul is saying, guys, in order for this message to go forward, you must pray. Pray that this message goes forward. This news is a, it's a mystery, but it is no longer hidden. It has been heard, and it is known, and it is meant to be heard more, than it is meant to be known more. By people who have not yet received this revelation. This was Paul's desire. And for this to happen, prayer must 
take place. And it goes on in chapter 1 verse 27. He says that this mystery is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Jesus was once hidden, but he's now revealed. But he's not revealed in some distant, abstract way. Jesus is Christ in you. He lives in you. <laughs> That mystery of Jesus is that real, that personal, lives in you. And he wants this message, this mystery to be known. And he says, the way it's going to happen is if you pray. Pray that I may proclaim it clearly. Paul is telling the Colossians that I may proclaim this mystery of Christ in a way that people will understand. That it may be proclaimed clearly. Although the mystery has now been revealed, it won't do much good if it is proclaimed in a way that people don't understand. When we tell people about Jesus, they should leave saying, man, I, I, I understand something there. I've understood that I'm broken, that I'm sinful, that God is way above me. That I cannot save myself. That I may go through the motions. And we, we've seen in Colossians how, you know, the traditions of man. And you can just go through the motions of tradition and culture and, and human uh, rules. And, and you just go through that. It's like, no, you, we actually come to understand that those things will not save us. They're not enough. Jesus had to come in flesh to save us. I get that now. It's been explained in a way that I can understand. We shouldn't present the gospel so that those who are hearing it, they look dumb and we look clever. Wow, man, the preacher is so clever. But I just left there wondering about what he was saying. That's not the purpose. No, it's, it's to proclaim it in a way that, hey, I, I, I got what you're saying. I got something from that. I understand who God is and my relationship to him needs to happen through Jesus Christ. And we shouldn't assume they know all the words we use. You know, Christians, we have a language called Christianese. It's a unique dictionary. And there's terms in there that no one else really knows except Christians. And if we're proclaiming the message of the gospel in Christianese, the non-Christian will be like, hey man, I don't get you. Translation, please. And Google Translate will not be able to translate. You must translate. In a way that is understood. And, and in order for us to get this, 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 this message across, we're not saying let's dilute the truth. We're saying keep things simple so that they are understood. And for that to happen, to have the right words, it happens through prayer, 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 dear friends. We need God's help to open people's minds. We need God's help to open people's hearts because the devil is at work to keep them blind, to keep them closed. And the way they open up, it's a spiritual thing. It happens as we access the power of God through prayer. And this is why Paul writes to the Corinthians. He says, the God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers. That's the devil. So that they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. How does that blindness go? How does the light of the gospel come through? Well, it's as we pray. God does something. I want to end with a quote from Billy Graham. Billy Graham said this, Prayer is crucial in evangelism. Only God can change the heart of someone who is in rebellion against him. No matter how logical our arguments or fervent our appeals, our words will accomplish nothing unless God's Spirit prepares the way. And how does God's Spirit prepare the way? As we pray. Looking ahead to our viral series. I'm excited about this series because it's like, man, evangelism, sharing the gospel, that's the core of who we are supposed to be as God's people. We're a community. We're a community on mission. I'm excited. But I'm also very much aware, very soberly aware that unless we pray, 
unless we are praying for the, the doors to be opened, for the communication of the gospel to be clear, for God to make a way, our efforts are in vain. So I want to encourage us that even as we head into the series, let's take every opportunity, every context available to pray, to pray, to pray. I want to ask Arthur to come up. One of the things I didn't mention as I was introducing Arthur is that he is an elder in training. The Bible speaks of the church, local churches, being led by elders. They're the primary leaders of local churches. And this man here is an elder in training. And one of the responsibilities of elders is to preach and to teach the Word of God. So Arthur, preach and teach the Word of God. Let's welcome him. Thanks so much, Shashi, for the encouragement and the vote of confidence. Uh, I thought I thought Shashi was going to hand over the the wireless mic because <laughs> that's what I was looking forward to, actually. <laughs> um, but no, no, it's cool. I'm not ready yet. <laughs> um, I'll do that next time. Um, but yeah, just um, as we have been talking on prayer, and I think Shashi laid out the foundation quite well that. Prayer is something that we should be devoted to. Prayer is something that God requires of us to do so that he can move in the lives of others. And I'm just going to, the passage that I'm going to read from is Colossians 4 verse 12 to 13. And this looks at an example. And the best way for us to learn about something is to see an example laid out for us in scripture. And um, what I'm going to, the, the scripture that I'm going to read from is Colossians 4 verse 12 to 13. But... Um, before even I start, uh, I just like how today we, we honored the people who serve here in, in God's Tribe Church. Um, we honored them for their service. We honored them that they've given their time to come and, 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 and serve in the house of the Lord. And usually when we hear the word service, we usually think that, oh, service is, some, is a doing, like, I need to be seen doing something. Um, but today we see an example of a guy named Epaphras, and to him, his service was prayer. And I'll just like to to expound on that a bit. That Epaphras is an example um, of how prayer can be a service. Prayer can be a service to the body of Christ, and prayer can be a service to those outside the body. So I'm going to read Colossians 4:12. Epaphras, who is one of you and a servant of Christ, sends greetings. He is always wrestling in prayer for you, that you may stand firm in all the will of God. Mature and fully assured, I, vou I vouch for him that he is working hard for you and for those in Laodicea and Heropolis. Here we see that Epaphras is a, a Colossian. He's from the body of the, Col um, the um, Colossian church. And here Paul highlights that he's a servant of Christ. Epaphras was one whose heart was postured as a servant. He was a servant to God and he was devoted to pleasing Christ in everything that he did. Now, if you're in service to someone and if we are consumed with who Jesus Christ is and what he is about, and if we are to serve him effectively, we first need to know his heart. We need to know what consumes his heart. We need to know what his focus is. Um, because as Sheshi outlined earlier on, Jesus is about saving the lost. And here Epaphras, a servant of Christ, um, is said by Paul to be wrestling in prayer for the congregation. Um, Epaphras, a servant of Christ, is wrestling in prayer for the people who he was a part of, the body of Christ. And um, if, if, you're, if, if he is a servant of Christ, he has been molded, or rather his interests align with that of Christ. And I don't have it up there, but in John 21, towards the end, um, we have an example of what Jesus says. Jesus, after, and just for a bit of context, Peter denied God three times just before he died. But after Christ rose from the dead, P um, Peter met, met with Jesus for the first time. And in, those, in that meeting, Jesus asked Peter three times, Simon John, do you love me more than these? And three times, Peter responds, uh, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And three times, Jesus says, feed my lambs, take care of my sheep, feed my sheep. 
So here we get a glimpse into the heart of God that his concern is for the individual. He's concerned about Peter. He's concerned about bringing him back to the faith after he fell. But immediately after, he instructs him to then focus on his brothers. Feed God's sheep. Feed the lamb. Feed the people that Jesus himself died for. And we have an example of Jesus Christ because he is the son of man who came. He is the king of kings. But he is also the lamb of God who was slain. He is the good shepherd who laid down his life for the sheep. And he tells Peter here, as a believer, I want you who loves me to tend to my sheep. And here we see that Epaphras takes and catches this heart of God. In Luke 22, verse 32, it says, But I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. Here we see Jesus has served Peter in prayer that his faith remains strong. But immediately after that, he tells Peter, strengthen your brothers. This is what I'm telling you. I, I'm, I'm strengthening you, but my interest also is in the body. My interest is in the sheep. And here Epaphras catches the heart of God because in a similar manner, Epaphras is wrestling in prayer for the congregation of um, Col Colossae. He's wrestling in prayer for his brothers and sisters who he's currently not present with, but he constantly brings them before God. Constantly praying and bringing them to God is not only an act of service for the body of Christ in um, Colossian at the time, but it was a service for Jesus Christ, who he is consumed with. He's a servant of Jesus Christ who prays, and he prays and wrestles in prayer for his other brothers and sisters in the Lord. S secondly, I would just like to highlight what the content of Epaphras' prayer was. Epaphras' wrestled in prayer, but his co the content of his prayer was that you may stand firm in all the will of God, mature and fully assured. So here, there's a need for the believer to stand firm. And Epaphras catches, um, here Epaphras is concerned about the walk and the spiritual well-being of his brothers and sisters in, Coloss in Colossae. Um, and I just want to read from Ephesians 6 verse 13. And if you've been a believer for any amount of time, you know that Ephesians 6 verse 13 is, is, is a chapter on spiritual warfare. It outlines what spiritual warfare is and gives the reality that as Christians, we're actually in a battle. As Christians, there's a reality that we face and there are spiritual forces which oppose our advancing the gospel of Christ on earth. Ephesians 6 13 says, Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground after you have done everything to stand. And verse 18 goes on to say, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of pray prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. So here Paul outlines that it's important for us to pray, but he overlays that with the reality of the spiritual battle that we're in as Christians. And here he tells his people, I mean, he implores people to stand and put on the armor of God. But he also says, pray all kinds of prayers. Pray for yourself. Pray in the spirit. But also pray for all the Lord's people. As Lord's people, we are not, um, we are not passive in the way that we, we, we operate in the kingdom. We are active. And because we are active, that brings us um, under the, the, the visor of the enemy. We become a target for the enemy. And as a result of that, here Epaphras focuses his prayer and s on, on, on what, what is the priority. And the priority is the spiritual well-being of the church. We have to stand and we also have to pray for our brothers to stand. In Ephesians 6, it says we live in dark times and that is very true. And if you've been a Christian for any amount of time, you know the different struggles that you face. It's not easy. And, and as a result of that, people tend to fall sometimes. But here Epaphras' concern for the church is that they stand firm and are presented mature and Christ-like um, as, as a body of Christ. And I think a few, no, I don't think, actually a few weeks earlier, uh, Jeremy did preach on Colossians 2. And he did preach of the threat of the gospel that was taking place in Colossians, uh, in, the play, um, in the, that church at that time. In that moment, there were, there was false doctrine creeping in into the church. There was false doctrine about Jesus Christ plus other traditions is what will save you. And they were tainting the gospel which they planted as a church. So that the risk 
I mean, there was already a risk to the believers being um, led astray by false teachings. And I feel that that put a sense of urgency on Epaphras to prioritize his prayers and focus on what really mattered. And what really mattered is that his brothers stand firm, that his brothers stand mature and, and fully assured in the word of God. And I believe it takes a mature Christian to give energy and spiritual well-being, I mean, energy to the spiritual well-being of others. And I know that here we are all standing here today, and if you've been walking with Christ for any amount of time, there have been people who have been praying for you. There have been people who have spoken life into you. The reason you stand here today, um, in whatever condition or situation your heart is in, is because at some point, some way, without you, whether you knew about it or whether you didn't know about it, there was someone who was laboring in prayer for you. Um, I know growing up that um, prayer was something which we did a lot at home, but we found it uh, tasking because um, our mother used to play for a very long time. She'd pray, like, and you'd, you'd even wake up, you'd fall asleep, you'd still wake up, she'd still be praying. But I believe it's, it's such laboring and wrestling in prayer that Epaphras did for the people that he was, um, the people that God placed in his, in his life and in the church. And it's that kind of prayer that even has me standing here today because it's not, it's not that I'm standing here on my own, but it's because of prayers of other people. And, and here Epaphras inspires us to do the same for others, to pray for others, to pray for our brothers and sisters, especially in the, in the, in, in the, in the body of Christ, because we are, it's, it's not easy and we are under attack by the enemy. And for us to stand and for us to advance the kingdom of God, what really is required of us is to pray, not only for other people to come into the camp, but for us to strengthen the people who are already in the camp. And that is what I believe Epaphras here lays out as a, as a, as a beautiful example in Colossians. I mean, in, in the book of Colossians. And finally, I would just like to highlight that, that prayer indeed is hard work. Prayer is not um, something which is easy to do. And in, in, the, in the verse 13, it says, I vouch, Paul says, for, uh, I'm about Epaphras, that I vouch for him that he's working hard for you. And he mentions two other locations there as well. Now, he was working hard for them, not in their presence, but he was laboring for them in prayer. And that was an acceptable service for even Paul to write it down, to say he's working hard. It's not something that Epaphras did on one prayer evening on a Friday, but this was something that he consistently, did, consistently um, he was consistently praying for the body of Christ, which is why even Paul wrote it down, that this is the theme of Epaphras' life. He works hard, he, he works hard for you, he labors in prayer, and he prays for your spiritual well-being. And that is an example that I believe that here at, at God's tribe we can all borrow from. If you're a believer and you're in a body of believers, I believe we should actually devote our energies to praying for one another. Um, last week we had a young adults meeting and it was really encouraging to hear um, the young people in our church um, the plans that they have for the year and what it is they're hoping for God to do. Um, but one of the things which was said, um, and Alice actually mentioned it towards the end of our meeting, is that if you're going through your day and you just remember any one of the requests which were made on that day, just pray for them. If they come to mind, pray for them. And I believe that we can be tasked with, um, even during the week, just think of three, four, five brothers or sisters in the body of Christ and bring them to God. Um, this kind of work is not something which happens automatically. It's something which requires intentionality. It requires planning. It requires us to devote ourselves and say, okay, I'm going to set aside time specifically to pray for my brothers and sisters. And I believe that this week, um, it's, it's been a challenge to me as well because during the week you can get so busy, you don't have time, you come home, you're exhausted, and you have to be out early the next day. But I believe if we make an conscious effort to devote just a bit of time to pray for our brothers and sisters, in addition to what Sheshi said about praying for the, the, the expansion of the gospel and praying for ourselves as well. I believe that we will see traction, we will see people's lives change because truth of the matter is God, um, God moves when we pray. When we pray, it, there is fruit. When we pray, fruit is seen and that fruit may not be immediate 
but it is a worthy work. It's a noteworthy service, and it's something that we can all do as Christians, I believe. Yeah, thank you. And, and yeah, thank you again for the opportunity to be up here. Uh, I'm quite nervous, but um, I thank God that um, today my heart has been touched by this message um, because I'm preaching to myself as I stand here. But also I believe that we have all heard from God here today. Amen. Arthur, well done. Well done. Great job, man. Fantastic. We, we trust that we will see you up here again preaching God's word. Um, we, we have some minutes, and what, what we're going to do now is we are going to put into practice what we have heard. We're going to take some time to pray together. So what I would like us to do is to get into a group of about four, five, six maximum. And uh, there's lots of space in this room. You could come down into this area here. Uh, down the aisles, down the sides, find a spot and pray for each other. Uh, you can give a specific prayer request, please pray for this, or you can just pray, ask God, how can I pray for this person? Um, let's put into practice what we have heard this morning. Shall we do that? Let's get up. And if you're not really familiar with, with praying, uh, please do not be scared. Uh, please don't run away. Uh, just Tag along with the person that you came with this morning uh, and, 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 and just glean and hear. And maybe you, even you could ask for prayer. You say, maybe pray for me for this. I'm not sure how I'm going to pray this morning, but you can pray for me for this. You're very, very welcome, yeah, even if maybe you're, you're still trying to figure out this whole prayer thing. So shall we do that? Shall we get up and have some time praying together? Great.
that um, that we can come to at any point of our day, of our week, and pray, Lord. Help us to keep that a priority. Help us to see the need in that in our daily lives for ourselves, for each other. For those we don't know, Lord, Lord, help us to come to you to pray and to make that a priority, Lord, to be devoted in it. We just thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. That brings us to the end of our service. Um, I do want to do a, a little bit of a plug. Um, if you like books, uh, I know of a great book that I've just started to read. It's called Pray Like Epaphras. I'm not going to name the author because he would be too humble to say that he's written a book. But he's in your midst here. So I would, I would suggest go to Kindle, find the book, Pray Like Epaphras. Uh, it's got everything to do with what you're doing today. And uh, just a great read as well. So Google it and uh, see who the author is. And uh, other than that, we'll have a great, have a great Sunday. Uh, there is some snacks outside here just to... Uh, as well. So you're welcome.